All right, lecture number 19, we're going to hit some highlights on some changes that occur in mom while she's pregnant. Obviously, the uterus is going to change in size to accommodate the growing fetus. This is a pretty interesting picture here, which is showing you a pregnant female in cross-section. And here's the uterus where our embryo and later fetus is developing. And uh, the curved feature here is showing you the position of the fundus of the uterus at the during the third month, fourth month, fifth month, and so forth up to the ninth month. So you, you can see how these changes occur. And the little dotted line here is showing you the shift that occurs after dropping of the fetus occurs as childbirth is approaching. Um, the fundus by the end of the ninth month up here, it reaches the level of the xiphoid process, xiphoid process, very bottom, that little pointy portion at the bottom of the inferior portion of the sternum. So pretty dramatic change. I don't think that's a surprise to anybody. Uh, changes in the cardiovascular system are pretty interesting. Your blood volume in a female has to increase by 25 to 40 percent. That's, that's big by the end of the 32nd week. And um, your cardiac output is going to increase by about 20 to 40 percent. And do we remember what cardiac output, how we calculate that? Cardiac output is your heart rate times your stroke volume. Right? Okay. And so what's going to happen to uh, a mom's heart rate if her cardiac output is having to go up that much. There's only so much that the stroke volume can go up. So if you're going to raise it, the heart rate is going to have to increase. And indeed it does. So it's showing you over here uh, in an average female, if the heart rate four weeks before we start gestation, was say in the upper 50s, by the time she reaches 36 weeks of gestation into a pregnancy, it's going to be up more like 75, which makes sense. I mean, you've got to increase this heart rate quite a bit if you're going to increase your cardiac output. Why do we need to increase cardiac output? Let's think about that. Can we re relate that to energy? What's going on inside the embryo and the fetus here that's developing? Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of mitosis. Lots of cell division. Lots of energy is going to be needed. Where do cells get their energy from? They have to do cellular respiration. So all these embryonic and later fetal cells are going to need lots of oxygen gas for cellular respiration, lots of glucose, uh, lots of other sugars and amino acids and lipids and so forth, the building blocks. You know, where does the embryo and the fetus get those things? They have to get them, get those from the mother. So the mother is going to have to increase her cardiac output to send all of these things to the placenta to pass over to the developing embryo and the fetus. And the mother's blood is also going to be picking up the wastes from the developing embryo and the fetus so that she can excrete and expel those along with her own wastes. Uh, some other changes. So obviously your enlarging uterus there is going to put increasing pressure on the IVC, inferior vena cava, and also on the abdominal aorta. So if you think about that, that's going to increase, remember how we talked about afterload being one of the things, the pressure uh, in the arterial circulation beyond the left ventricle, that, that uh, if that goes up, then the left side of the heart is going to have to work harder to pump blood into the uh, arterial circulation. So the heart, heart's going to have to work a lot harder. And then the inferior vena cava has a harder time returning blood from the legs. So remember, even your blood down in your legs comes back to the heart through the inferior vena cava. The inferior vena cava is squished. It's going to make it harder for that blood to return from the legs. So what's going to happen to mom's legs when that occurs? If you have increased blood volume down in the legs, that's going to increase the, the pressure of the blood in the blood vessels. What's going to happen to plasma? It's going to get squeezed out of those 
capillaries and the tissues of the legs and it will go into the surrounding tissues so mom's legs are going to uh, swell in many cases. And that's called edema and again that's going to occur because of the increase in blood pressure down in those lower limbs. The higher the blood pressure the more fluid it will get squeezed out of the capillaries and into the surrounding tissue. Um, also this can lead to varicose veins. So varicose veins occur when, all right, so here's a diagram of a, of a vein. And remember, veins have valves, um, the ones in the, the limbs do, to prevent backflow of blood uh, due to gravity. But if you've got all this increased pressure in the uh, inferior vena cava, it makes it more difficult for those valves to work properly, so they may allow the blood to flow backwards anyway and when that occurs you have varicose veins that develop. And varicose veins are just superficial veins in which blood is pooling because the the valves are not able to prevent the the backflow of the blood. If that occurs in veins around the uh, anal canal, the anal opening, uh, those are called hemorrhoids. If you've ever had a hemorrhoid that's an enlarged vein right around the anal opening something very pleasant to, to think about. All right, so those were just some key things that change in a mother during pregnancy. Of course, there are many others, uh, things like gestational diabetes, for example. Uh, mom can begin to have some problems with uh, insulin resistance during pregnancy, and that's likely because uh, that's a response by the body to try to preserve as much blood glucose as possible, uh, have that diverted over to, to the developing embryo and fetus rather than letting mom cells take up that excess glucose. And so if it becomes severe enough, then mom can develop gestational diabetes from that. So there are many other things that can occur in a, uh, in a female as she's pregnant. Think about it, that increased cardiac output and how that might impact blood pressure. Lots of pregnant women develop high blood pressure later in life as well. So you can think back to these other body systems we've studied this semester and it makes some of the things that happen in a pregnant female that we've all heard about before more and more understandable. Okay, uh, lecture number 20, we're going to talk about labor and delivery. So we're finally, we've been through sperm development and ova development and conception and development of an embryo and a fetus and we're finally going to pop this thing out and and finish out the reproductive system. The last, very last lecture, I'm going to provide an overview though on birth control methods, which is a pretty important topic as well. And then we'll finally be done with the reproductive system and you will finally be done with your biology 202 class. And uh, I know you're devastated to hear that news, but um, we're just about done.